ladies and gentlemen, as the director of Fifty Culture, all its good own features, it's a great pleasure to welcome you to the presentation ceremony of the International Fifty Awards. We are honored that the prize is being awarded here at National Festival during the 15th International Fifty Festival. This year, the International Fiction Award is presented for the seventh time. The prize winners have already performed four times this week as a part of the International Fiction Festival, and Norwegian audiences have been enjoying a golden opportunity to experience the winners' groundbreaking work. And there is even more to come. I would like to offer the prize winners and all of you a very warm welcome to National Theatre and to the presentation ceremony of the International Ibsen Award. Dear Minister, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in March this year, the jury presented its unanimous decision to give the International Ibsen Award 2016 to the British theatre group Force Entertainment. And it's a pleasure and honor for me to present the members of the jury. Anne Tönsa from the National Theatre of Norway. Brandsweig from France. Julie Hollich from Australia. Sofia Jupiter from Sweden. And Roman Dolcanski from Russia. My name is Pierre Boyer-Hansen from Oslo. And Dr. Thomas Oberender from Germany will uh, join us later today. And I will now read from the committee's statement. Fourth Entertainment has created their own performative space within the history of theatre. Here, theatrical conventions are played out and they are torn apart. This influential group recognizes theatre as a central voice within society and with dedication uses theatre as an arena for public debate, an open, reflexive and poetic space with ethical and social value. Since the group was founded in Sheffield in 1984, Force Entertainment has spent over 30 years creating theatre that asks questions and fuels dreams. The company is an inspiration to performers everywhere, creating exquisitely profound theatre out of nothing more than actors speaking to an audience from a bare stage. For three decades, the British Collective has explored surprising, provoking and captivating means of creating performances that blur the boundaries between theatre and reality. Under the direction of Tim Eschelt, the company has developed an entirely new relationship between production and audience, and between new narrative strategies and new theatrical forms. While the experimental group's artistic style is far from that of Ibsen's contemporary drama, the societal perspective inherent within the group's performances is much closer. Because Force Entertainment's theatre is part of society, it influences society and is able to change it for the performance duration. The audience is drawn into the alternative reality of the group's theatrical creations in a highly unusual and freeing manner. Force Entertainment's work does not rest with a single form, style or tradition, but represents a seeking and gravitating force, a continual creative exploration of what the theatre is and can be, in a way that has changed the theatre's possibility. An award to Force Entertainment is therefore an award to the entire dynamic, challenging and collective process that is theatre, and to what theatre might be in the future. The committee has therefore chosen to honour this continually surprising and not least entertaining theatre group because Force Entertainment revive and challenge the theatre and recognise and utilise the power inherent in the art form. Thank you.
Thank you, John and Hugo. I'm Adrian Heathfield. I'm a professor of performance and visual culture at the University of Roehampton in London. Um, Laudations are rare in a professor's work life. Perhaps this is the only laudation I will ever give. We spend our work lives scrutinizing, diagnosing, dissecting, pulling apart words and acts, carrying with the negative in order to better understand the object before us. Pleasure, praise, we often strangers to this process. Evaluation. I can warmly say an affinity with the International Ibsen Award Committee that there is no other living artist or company that I would rather be honored than for entertainment. To give an account of their achievements is hard, not just because they are makers of that most elusive of art forms, the theater, a baseless fabric of visions that melts into thin air, and not just because they have made a creative life through a kind of performance that draws attention to time's passing, that works through paradoxical atmospheres of affective intensity, where words and deeds do not affirm each other, do not conform to rational explanation. It's difficult to give an account because what makes their work so singular and so exceptional are qualities found in a prodigious array of over 60 performance works sustained and distributed across over three decades of collective labor and seen in over 40 countries across the globe. For contemporary theater and performance artists, forced entertainment are a load star, a light so consistently bright in the constellation of contemporary cultural agents that every other maker must use them to locate themselves, to navigate their course through the turbulent seas of creative work. Giving an account is also about calculation, about adding up, measuring gains and losses, summing what counts. And here, Fox Entertainment's long collaborative engagement is another incalculable scene. Countless minutes, hours, days, months spent being and making with others, watching, doing, performing, testing, testing out limits, propositions, bodies, worlds. It's easy to forget because they have made it seem so right, so honorable, so appealing, how hard this long experimental toil of collective affinity is, how counter to a culture obsessed with the individual, with authority and authorship, with ownership, with services and fast delivery, with the immediately visible and legible. At the age of 18, 30 years ago, when I first saw their early work let the water run its course to the sea that made the promise, I sat frozen in the theater as the audience filed out, unable to leave my seat, speechless too. I had just witnessed something that took apart all the lazy assurances of contemporary theatrical work and replaced them with forms derived from necessity and urgency, raw, desirous, real people there, bodies striving without reason or goal in a bare world made by luminous, broken poetry. A dystopia that felt like the inner world of that present time. A theater, finally, that spoke with the time. A time of longing for another world, of possibility and love, beyond the impoverished, dysfunctional, and violent realities of those mid-1980s days. A warmongering surveillance state with brutalizing internal enemies laying waste to countless lives, Western corporations with spawning greed and vast inequality, and the government was selling off the welfare state. All was accounting, for those who counted and those who simply didn't count. Folks Entertainment Theatre was born in this context, 
understand the culture. History hasn't stopped repeating itself. Amidst the latest wave of corporate ideology and controlled society, isolationism, intolerance, and fear, corporate entertainment continues to remind us of other kinds of values in life. Values that come not from the willful, robust, all consuming and defensive self, but from the experience of projection and dispossession, from alienation and non belonging, from the precarious community of those who have nothing in common. As a too frequent audience member, at some point in those 30 years, I got invited to come and see an early run through of a play, and as the world of course entertainment opened up, it's hard for occasional visitors outside of like myself to really get what's going on with them, so long as the process, so particular their language, so obscure the way it moves and sits and starts, rewinds and starts forward, in endless versions and revisions of morphing worlds. And at some stage later, I realized that this was the point. The work comes from the collective unconscious of a constantly shifting, opening social organism. And the last vestiges of that old, old micro society or queer family, the theatre truth, the covering band. And if I had had to count the years, to say what really counts in 30 years, it would be this. A half endured in this space of invention together with all its difficulties, ruptures, and regathering. A way to be an artist in the world and the long haul flight of a slow collective experiment in attentiveness to the emerging thing between us. So I simply want to say thank you for this entertainment, for the delicate melancholy and the twisted emotions and the raging explosions and the shabby rapping. Thank you for the pathos and the bathos, the gritty smiles and the rambling on and the soft, low question. Thank you for the bitter vitriol, the sentimental overload, the furious, the soulless proposition, the whimsical afterthought, and the preposterous too. Thank you for the sense of the sublime within the mundane, for presenting the unpresentable. Nothing, nothing left to show, nothing left to say, nothing left to do, and yet still turn around. Thank you for the stupid, hopeless, lost, hiding, clumsy, desperate, vain, talentless, misdemeanored, careless, distant, silly people who nonetheless try to be with us here tonight, try to do something, try to make it work, try to connect, try to love, try to make a show. Thank you for the repeated interruptions, the unfinished trains of thought, the intolerable facts of others. Thanks for composite worlds made up of cutting something against something else. And thank you for a silence that can never happen, a despair without end, and for all the glimpses of the void. Thank you for the obscenity, for the sustained, unerotic act. And for saying the unsayable, and saying it again, and then saying it some more. And for the last, thank you especially for the last, the sniggers, the aching, heavy ones, and sudden the pause, the quiet, interior chuckles, and the rolls of the period. Thank you for the failures, every one, the human falls, the stumbling into silence, the failed attempts, the impossible desires, the faltering voices and swaying limbs, the useless acts and images, the redundant propositions and the tired old tales, the fading light. And thank you, yes, for all the lists, the proliferations and flowerings, elaborations and echoes, the same again, the different once more, the publications and the fabulations, the utopias and dictators. Thank you for going on too long, for staying up all night, for seeing what comes from utter exhaustion, 
the endless questions and the stories without end. And thank you for the ineffable feeling of the ending before it really is the end. The many, many ends. Thank you, Happy, Richard, Claire, Robin, Terry, Tim, for all these unmemorable experiences and inexplicable atmospheres. Thank you for the dark heart of things, for the joy in catastrophe, and thank you for a lame theatrical pop cloud that silently drifts across a thundered world. I could look at that cloud for 30 years. For these things, amongst a thousand other tiny shards of memory, sparks of love, of passion, spirit, and love. Thank you. The great comic is in one place. I believe in his life. The man who stands in the middle of the people. It's good to serve the middle of the people. As to all other great dramatists, even if their place are set in the past. Because the drum, drama connects to us, and at the same time, the important question. It gives us to understand the past and handle the future. In short, drama brings us onwards.
Gott geben kann und wenn wir das tun. We also want to say some other thanks. Thanks to the people who brought us this day to the same time as we did. We are so appreciative of that. Thanks to those who brought us this day to the same time as we did. Thanks to those who brought us this day to the same time as we did. Thanks to those who brought us And thanks to those who laughed and then stopped, not in a bad way or in a bad way. Thanks to people who never laughed or only kind of smiled or listened and looked to the floor. Thanks to those that wept, to those that gasped. Thanks to those that fidgeted. Thanks to those that slept in theatre seats. Thanks to those that dreamed or daydreamed. To those that half remembered shows. To those that forgot. So to those that never forgot a sentence or an image. To those that never took their eyes off the stage. Thanks. To the walkouts, thanks. To the hecklers, thanks. To the door slammers, yes, thanks. Thanks to those that stayed, thanks to those that supported, and those that said no, thanks. Thanks to those that watched live or via internet streaming, tweeting along from nearby time zones or identical time zones or on the other side of the world. To those that talked in bars and streets and foyers, thanks. To those that wrote letters, blogs, postcards, messages, thanks. And to those that nodded, thanks. And thanks again to those that slipped away in a hurry for a train or whatever. And only took memory with them as story, picture, or question. And... And thanks to the performance makers we watched across more than 32 years. Thanks to those other artists, some of them friends, that inspired, challenged, taught, and annoyed, distracted, and provoked us. To those that set the pace, or put a mark down for something, or a question in the form of a show in some big room, or a show in some basement gallery, or a show in an old factory, now converted, or a show on the stage of a nightclub, now closed, or a show on no stage at all, at the end of a room, at the end of a night, where things could change, where what's possible in theatre could change. Thanks to those that made time stop, made time speed up, made time slow down, to those that drew lines from the stage to the world outside, cutting the air with questions, filling the air with their doubt or compassion, laughter or rage, or just a really good gag. Like a really, really good gag. For the shows that made us doubt our own work, and for those that kicked us to go further, to think harder, to risk more, to be a bit fucking smarter, or to go less far. For those that open something. And thanks for the work that's made the work in all sorts of different ways across 32 years of time. Thanks for all the long phone calls and attempted phone calls to venues or forgotten phone calls to venues or forgotten venues over 32 years. <laughs> for 32 years of letters, faxes, emails, notes, posters, postcards, leaflets, brochures. For 32 years of meetings, journeys, planning, schedules, contracts, board meetings, other meetings and meetings. Thanks. For 32 years of sourcing props and building sets, thanks. For 32 years of van driving, loading, parking, building up, taking down, building up, taking down, again and again and again. Thanks for 32 years of advice from board members, friends, colleagues, for long hours and attention to detail and matters of policy, principle, and pure pragmatics for the daily work 
of sorting shit out. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks to those who improvised long hours with us over 32 years from the start until now. Thanks to those that tried with us, forgot lines with us, hit a groove with us in some improvisation or another that could or couldn't be recaptured early or late across 32 years in one room or another. To those that shared the space, one grungy and freezing cold room or another, one stuck rehearsal process or another, for one inspired moment or another, and thanks to those that took space and in taking it made it possible to continue. And thanks to those that threw light at it carefully and skillfully, and those who threw sound where needed beautifully and had the strength to leave silence where not. For the photographs on stage and off, the captured moments that often made it more clear what we were doing after all. Thanks. To the partners in making stuff happen, funders, venues, festivals, programmers, curators, co-producers, all. For the context, landscape and conversation, for the bricks and mortar, for the chance. For the chances. For the time with audiences, thanks. To Sheffield, thanks. And a hundred, hundred other cities, thanks. Thanks to those that wrote about the work in journals, interviews, blogs and books with words since the beginning, over 32 years, to those that helped unpick the work, that helped locate it, and thanks for the knowledge that the work is as fragile and uncertain now as it was at the start after 32 years and into onwards. Thanks for the time beyond this moment in anticipation for the single certainty that in the work there is nothing safe, nothing certain. For the question of the work that we'll make in coming years, good, bad, indifferent, inspired. For the continued fact of unknowing, the empty floor of the studio and the tough conversation. Thanks for what will come, shows stages, shifts, discoveries, for the works yet unmade, for the people we've yet to meet, encounters with audiences, for the life, blood and politics you can still get out of theatre, a stone, a stone heart, a broken heart, better for being broken. Thanks for the struggle with the time over 32 years from Thatcher to Brexit, we might say, from Reagan to the prospect of Trump, from one austerity to another, from one isolation to another via globalization and global warming, from one sour politics to another, from one xenophobia to another, from one crisis to another, from then, there, to here, now, for the wish that things were otherwise. Thanks. Thanks for the long argument about what matters, about what meaning is, about what theatre is or can be, about what politics is, about what the space and potential of performance can be about what the space of the social can be. Thanks to the certainty, thanks for the certainty that art springs from a complex interaction, half luck, half intuition, not metrics, 
or sentiment capture, not market research. Thanks for this prize. Again, thanks for it. Which we take as a nod, not just to this group, but as a signal to another theatre, another history, another story buried in the history of theatre, a nod to the collective, to the homemade, to the independent scene, to collaboration, to group risk, to time, space, performance and presence as more than equal to writing, to being and doing together hard, fragile, tough, for 32 years from the start to the present and after onward. Thanks for what will come, for the breakup of the company, fast or slow, by cut, slide, dissolve or implosion, for the end to this particular crystallization of the possible. Take it or leave it, thanks. For the ticking clock that underwrites all performance, still time counting down. For what comes after, thanks and all that moves with, past, and after us, thanks. To younger artists with different answers to the same questions, and new questions with new answers, and new questions without, all, without answers at all, thanks. For the unfolding conversation and word of mouth that is performance, thanks. For this moment in this room, in this place, at this time, thanks. For this prize, thanks. For the watching and the drawing of breath, for the marking of connection and the puncture of distance between, thanks. Really, thanks.